Hello, I am Mark Root. I'm a consultant at Intertech Inc. and I have been working on an Electron and Angular project for the last year and a half. I am really a fan of Electron and what it can do and what it can bring and would like to take this opportunity to share with you guys the how to get up and running using an Angular and Electron tech stack. Um, just to get started, let's talk about Electron a little bit, and then I'll demonstrate how to add Electron to an Angular project um, so that you can build cross-platform native applications um, for your desktop. So what Electron basically is, is a Chrome browser for that's dedicated to running a single application. It's kind of just a web server that you can download and run, download and install to your computer or your desktop and uh, it'll run whatever you kind of tell it to run. If you want you can tell it to run a remote URL if you feel like downloading and installing your favorite website you can set up your favorite URL there. Um, kind of like it says up here you can get Node.js with it so you can access the operating system at a somewhat high level um, and then it has templates built in for you know some of the most popular JavaScript frameworks. Um, we'll get a little bit more detail of how all this works here in a second. But first let's take a look at what current apps are built with Electron. And here's just a couple examples that you can go online and see a whole bunch more. But uh, I think this is a kind of an eye-opener when I talk to people about what what is possible with Electron and what it's currently being used for. Um, VS Code is super powerful ID, IDE. Um, Slack, you know, you can go across platform with all of that and get the same user experiment experience as I'll show in a second and then um, Adam was the original Electron project that ended up being a success and they went open source with it so that others can use it um, so what I kind of mean by using a single code base for building your applications would be this is an example of what slack looks like on all different uh, in three different ways building this with the same app. So um, the Slack desktop for Windows, Slack desktop for Mac, and the Slack web you know, all have the same um, look, feel, and are using the same code base, as you would assume. Um, the only difference here is the for the desktop, there's a left sidebar to switch between your current uh, group. And then in the web, you would use the URL to navigate to the different um, groups you're part of for Slack. But this is, I think, a really important image to see that it's the same across all platforms and um, you get the same user experience across the board. Um, so with that, I am going to demonstrate how to add Electron to a Angular CLI generated project. Um, if you aren't familiar with Angular, I do have a blog series on that as well, so you can get up and running using Angular CLI and then add Electron to build the net native desktop apps. Um, it's pretty slick, so let's get started. So what I have is pulled in my um, demo application from my other blog series. It uh, just is pretty bare bones Angular stuff, just an Angular CLI generated, like I said. Um, and it's got a couple different things with it. I can just show you real quick what it looks like on the web. So if we ng serve, it's going to build for me. And then we'll be able to take a look here in a second. So this is a uh, what it looks like on the web, the current uh, demo app. So just some basic stuff. Uh, it's not nothing special yet. We're still working on that. But this is just kind of to get you a feel that this is an Angular app built for the web. So to add Electron to your project, it's going to take a couple steps. Um, first thing you need to do, it's going to Electron is going to use the same main script. That your or the same package that JSON that your current application will use. So you need to add a couple things to Electron to the package JSON to get this to work. Um, 
we're going to be using Electron Forge today. It's the command line tool for Electron. And um, I think it's pretty slick, at least, to get up and going. Um, they say you have to choose your flavor for Electron. And um, just to get out, out, out of the gate, I uh, like Electron Forge. Um, maybe down the road, if you're getting more complicated into it, use um, Electron Builder for building and installing. But Electron Forge is going to do everything you need to do to get installers and get a you know full desktop app ready to go so um, let's see let's first start by adding our main script so electron has a main process that is going to look in your package.json for your main um, your main script that it's going to run and that script's going to open the open the electron app and then open a browser window and load up your application so I'm going to add it to SRC because Electron Forge doesn't want it in the same folder as the package JSON so we'll call it electron main.js and then we will add that folder or add that file To our, SR, to our source folder. So to get the file, the Electron documentation for getting started has um, a pretty good starting script for you um, that I'm just going to copy and paste in here real quick and then we will talk about it. Alright, so here is what um, main script's going to look like, and I'll just talk real quick about what's going on in here. Um, so, obviously, we're requiring Electron, just pre JavaScript stuff up in here. Um, I've added a function called isDev. It's going to check the process of the application and tell you if it's in development mode or not, which is going to be useful uh, later on if you want to check that and open up. Um, your dev tools you can do that as well so we also have a function called create window and what the window and what this does is well I'll create a window after the window is created it goes in here and it loads it does this load URL that will use path um, to find your index.html and if you're unfamiliar with angular this is where the entry point for your application is. Um, this is um, kind of what you put out on your dev, dev server if you're going out on the web. Um, so this, like I said, it, it'll, it'll find just a single um, execute or load URL and run that when the application opens. Um, so when you start the application, it's going to say, okay, the application's ready. Create the window, create the window, it'll run, it'll create the browser window, and then it'll load the URL that you have to find here. And this load URL it is your Angular application. Um, this is all going to be up and available online if you need it. So then you have your main script up and ready, you've added it to your vacuum JSON, and next you need to add a few things to let your application know or to set up an application for Electron. Um, it needs a name, a version, the main script that we created, an author, and a description. So let's just add the only things that you really need to add that aren't added by the Angular CLI are the author and the description. Alright, so then we need to add our packages that are Electron. Um, since we're using Electron Forge, um, it only has a handful of packages that are really necessary for um, getting up and going here. And that's really what we're just trying to do is get up and going. So we are going to add 
Electron, the Electron Forge, and Electron Rebuild Compile. And then we also need to add a couple of dependencies for compiling. Here. That's Electron Compile and Electron Squirrel Startup. And that's for your Windows builds. Um, so that's, that's pretty, there's your packages, and that's kind of what you need. Finally, we need to give our forge, electron forge, a config file, or configuration information. Um, it's some pretty bare bones stuff to get started, but it's going to look like this. Um, let's see here. All right. So what do we have here? Um, we give our make targets, depending on Windows, Darwin, or Linux. Um, some additional configuration, just to tell Electron what's going on, and then give it some a name. Otherwise, it'll get mad at you for not having that. Um, so if you're wondering where this came from, Electron Forge has templates built into it that you can run. And what I did was just generate a template for Angular um, took all that information, that config file stuff, and then pull, pulled it into here, into package.json. And that's all you need to really do for your package.json to get started. So the last thing you're going to have to do is update your base ref. Um, not a huge fan of this personally, that you have to do this, but it's so that Electron knows to look locally in its file system for additional assets. When you start adding pictures and stuff, it'll be able to find them. Otherwise, it's going to be lost. It doesn't know where to look. So with that, we should be able to build our application. All this is going to do is create the application into the disk folder, like any other Angular application. And then we can run Electron from there. Um, it'll take a second to get through here. So our application builds, um, just normal Angular building of an application. And then we're going to need to use our Forge script. Oh, that's something we missed. Got to add our scripts for running Electron. Sorry about that. Let's add this real quick. Um, I'll get into package and make here in a second. Essentially, Electron Forge start just as the CLI way to get the Electron apps up and started. So now that we have done that, let's see what we get when we run Forge Start. Oh, that's not good. Oh, I guess I forgot to install, which is a key step because now we have Electron in our project. So. Give it a second to install, and then we'll try that again. Okay, now we've installed. Let's, let's see if this works this time. Run for start. Getting the start up here. Let's see where it comes. Here is your Electron app um, for your Angular app. It's pretty simple right there. You're up and going and you're ready to get developing uh, with your Angular, with Angular and Electron. So that was pretty slick and pretty easy. And uh, the cool thing is that this doesn't break your actual web app. So you can um, still got all the same stuff that I have on the web that I have here. So just to prove that point, when you serve, I don't do anything special. I just pull up my window that is lost. It's still building, so give me a second. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the gist of it. You just add the configuration stuff for Electron, and you can have just a built native app. For your desktop, there are APIs for accessing the operating system that you can add and additional functionality that 
I would add as well. And then you can just use environment variables or checks for if it's in an Electron app to actually run that portion of the application if you want to use a single code base for both web and native desktop. Um, but with that, there's one additional thing that is pretty slick about this, and that's this um, uh, the make. So using make is just going to generate an ex a distributable application that's going to be native to whatever operating system you run the make command on. So if I am on Linux, it's going to create a Linux distributable for us. Depending on what target we use, it'll make whatever distributable you want. And then same for Windows or Mac OS. Um, so just to demonstrate that, I'll run this quick and then show you the output. It's going to take a second to run, so I'll be right there, right back. All right, so back and we have built our installers here, so we can go into, I believe it's here, has some DLIs with it, and then you find your application here. Let's load it right up. And we are built, and here is our installed application. To show that it sticks around, let's pin it to the taskbar, and then we kill it, and we close it all out. All right, and let's say this is killed. Open our application. Do something on the wrong window. And there you go. It's right there. Good to go. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the kind of my favorite part about all this is that with very little setup. I'm able to build and install a desktop application and as a web developer with no desktop experience that's pretty neat especially because it's cross-platform and we can do all sorts of cool stuff with that um, so yeah that's kind of what we got there uh, there's I have some additional stuff in my blog post about may streamlining the development process um, right now it's set up so that you have to run build before you run electron every time um, the other option is just build an angular application and add electron to it that's uh, kind of one way to go that way you don't have to worry about any electron apis or anything like that um, in a future post i will add electron api and native uh, features to it um, but for now that's kind of what you got get up and running and start building your native apps using web development um, any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. Um, hope this was useful for you. Thanks.